If you've ever been curious about toxic shock syndrome, also known as TSS, we're going to get into everything in this video. We're going to cover what exactly it is, what causes it, how to prevent it, symptoms to look out for, what to do if you get those symptoms, what treatment looks like, can you get it from a menstrual cup? We're covering all things along with some things that you've likely never heard about as it relates to toxic shock syndrome and they just might surprise you. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's get into how you get it. Toxic shock syndrome is a rare but life-threatening condition caused by bacteria getting in the body and releasing harmful toxins. Now, there are two types of bacteria that does this, and I'm just going to put them right here because I'm not going to attempt to pronounce them. <laughs> now, while TSS is often linked to tampon use and women, I want you to understand something really important here. It can affect anybody, and that includes men, children, and older postmenopausal folks as well. Now, the reason a lot of people are wary of TSS, even though it is a rare condition, is because it can get worse very quickly and it can be fatal if not treated promptly. But the good thing is, if it is diagnosed and treated early, most people make a full recovery. And that's the point of this video, to educate you about TSS so that you are aware and if you display any of the symptoms, you can assure that you're getting treated promptly. Now, the reason it's often linked to tampon exposure is because many TSS cases that do arise are a direct result of tampon usage. And it's two ways that this happens. When tampons, especially the super absorbent variety, are left for too long, they encourage bacteria growth. And the second way is that tampons tend to stick to the vaginal walls, especially if you have a lighter flow and the absorbency of the tampon is higher than the flow. When you go to remove it, it could create little abrasions or micro tears, and that's where the bacteria can seep into. But let's dive a little deeper into how you get it. Those bacteria, the two that I mentioned here, they normally live on the skin, the nose, the mouth without causing any harm. But if they get deeper in the body, they can release toxins that damage tissue and stop organs from working. Some other things you need to know is that TSS is not spread from person to person. It isn't something that is contagious. And it's also not something you build an immunity to. So if you've had TSS before, it doesn't mean you will not get it again. In fact, many have identified that it actually increases the likelihood of you getting it again. So you may be wondering, okay, girl, tell me what the symptoms are because I, I, I want to be able to identify that so I can get myself sorted. I got you. Let's get into the symptoms. They usually start off pretty mild and get bad quickly. The symptoms of toxic shock syndrome include things like high fever and flu-like symptoms like headaches, feeling cold, feeling tired or exhausted, aching body, sore throat, and cough. Other signs include things like diarrhea or sudden sunburn-like rash on your body. Another sign is when your lips, your tongue, or the whites of your eyes go a bright red. Dizziness and fainting-like symptoms have also been identified, along with fainting, seizures, muscle aches, difficulty breathing, and confusion. Now, these symptoms may not all occur together. You may have one or a few at a time, or you may have them all. The key is, as soon as you begin identifying these symptoms, you want to go and see a doctor. And the reason you don't want to take this lightly if you're experiencing these symptoms or suspect that you may have toxic shock syndrome is because, as I noted before, these symptoms get progressively worse really fast. And complications could include shock, renal failure, or death. Part of no party under the penalty of death, do you not understand? Now let's get into a bit of the treatment and what that would look like if you do have it. If it's identified that you do have toxic shock syndrome or it's suspected, you will be admitted to the hospital and you may need to be treated in the intensive care unit. Now, in the past, there have been many ways that toxic shock syndrome has been treated, so let's just get into a few of them here. The most common is antibiotics to treat the infection. And in some cases, you get purified antibodies that have been taken from donated blood. And these would be given to you to help your body fight off the infection as well. You may potentially be given oxygen if you need assistance with breathing, an IV for fluids, of course, to prevent dehydration and potential organ damage. There's the possibility that you'd also be given some medication to help control blood pressure. And if it's identified that your kidneys are starting to fail, then you'd also be given dialysis. In the most severe cases, surgery is given to remove the dead tissue. And on the very rare occasion, it may be necessary to amputate the affected area. 
Now, depending on how bad it is and your age and your own medical conditions, of course, you can start seeing a full recovery within a few days, but then it takes others some weeks. It really does depend on you and your body when the TSS was caught and how bad it got. So I mentioned earlier that I will answer the question of if menstrual cups can cause toxic shock syndrome. And the answer is, while really rare, with any period product, you cannot eliminate your risk to zero when it comes to TSS. So it can happen on rare occasions if you're keeping your menstrual cup in much longer than recommended, or if you go in and scrape yourself up and obviously cause abrasions in there, then of course, if bacteria gets trapped with anything, then the likelihood of TSS can happen. And that's just not with menstrual cups, but that's with discs, that's with diaphragms, that's with toys. As I mentioned earlier, children can get it, men can get it, people that are postmenopausal can also get it. And this is why it's so important to not just know your body and can identify when something is wrong, but to be able to take the action when you realize something just isn't right. Now let's get into some risk factors of toxic shock syndrome. TSS has been associated with having things like cuts and burns on your skin, having had a recent surgery. Another thing that's been associated with TSS is having a viral infection like flu or the chicken pox, as well as using things like contraceptive sponges and diaphragms and discs and cups and tampons. Now that we've covered what TSS is, what causes it, if menstrual cups can cause it, what are some things you may not have known, like children and men and postmenopausal people having it, what you should do once you realize you have it, and risk factors, I want to get into how you can actually prevent it, because I think that's important to know and really can help save many lives. So things you want to do to prevent TSS is to treat your burns or any wounds immediately. Do it quickly and get medical advice if you notice anything weird like extra swelling or puffiness or redness or pus or increased pain beyond what you're used to expecting. And you, of course, want to use tampons that have the lowest absorbency that matches your flow. Because remember what we spoke about earlier, when you pull out a tampon, especially one that is dry or not fully saturated, it creates micro abrasions and that's where bacteria can get. So you want to ensure that you're not using a super high absorbency if it's not needed for you. Also ensuring that you're changing frequently. The safety wall is between every four to six hours. However, you have up to the eight hour mark to change a tampon, but it's preferable that you change it before then. And if you have a super heavy flow, you may also want to alternate between tampons and a menstrual cup or tampons and a pad just to avoid the time you have the tampon in, especially if you have a super heavy flow. And you, of course, want to make sure that your hygiene is on point, making sure to wash your hands before and after inserting a tampon or a menstrual cup or a disc or a diaphragm, like anything. You want to make sure that the hands are clean. And I mean, some of this stuff will go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. And that is not having more than one tampon at a time. Removing the tampon when you wake up after you go to sleep, if you are wearing it overnight, taking it out right away and making sure again that it's within that eight hour mark, preferably the four to six hours, but no more than eight hour mark, following the instructions on the back of the box. And it's a really good idea to avoid using a tampon if you've had TSS before. Are you feeling like a TSS pro at this point? I sure hope so. If you've learned anything at all, make sure you hit that like button. It helps other people find this video and benefit from the information. And if you are interested in all things your body and you want to know more about periods and things related to it, make sure you subscribe to this channel. My name is Ganette Jones, founder and CEO of Best Period. And I'm really here to help you have your best period ever. Period. Oh, I'm so glad I got my ring light back. Jeez, the lighting was looking pretty shady these last couple videos. That'd be really, really, really quiet. I'll be done in like 10, 15 minutes for this video, or you can be really quiet.